Hi everybody. Um, welcome to day two of our 12 part series. Um, my heart is very tendered at reviewing this study in order to start the video. So please bear with me. The message of this has just has just really brought me to a very somber place with Jesus at this moment. Um, I feel like Jesus kind of reminded me of things that are important and I needed to be reminded. Let's open in prayer so we can get started together. Father, thank you for this time and thank you for that still small voice and that just that nudging that you give us that you want to talk to us about things that are important. Father, help us understand this concept today. We do so badly want to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we had talked about yesterday, we are starting a 12-part series, and it's called R Series, the letter R. Um, and it's because there's so many different I am statements that begin with the letter R, we thought it might be fun. Kate and I thought it might be fun to throw them all together and see if we could do a whole series on them. So today is part two. Uh, and yesterday's was I am repentant and today's is I am remaining. That may sound funny, but I pray that as we delve into the scripture, that it will become clear what Jesus is asking of his followers. What we are going to read today is only one passage and it is Jesus himself having a conversation with Peter and the rest of the disciples and Jesus says some things that we really need to take hold of if we are going to call ourselves followers of Christ. So once again, what we are discovering, what we are learning is who God says I am. And that is enough to know who God says I am is all I ever have to be. If I try to be something outside of that, I'm not going to be successful because God knows who he wants us to be. And he tells us in his word. Okay, please go to Jot and Tittle on Facebook today to get your extra work. All right, let's get started. We are going to start reading right away in John chapter 21. And um, just for a, a minute of review, I want us to just look at verses 15 through 19. And we've covered these. We covered these verses in the sheep series that we did. And this is where Jesus looks at Peter and says three times, do you love me? And Peter answers, yes, I do. And Jesus says three times, three times, then take care of my sheep. So we, we see this beautiful, just closeness in this dialogue between Jesus and Peter. And we learned that it could very well have been correlated to Peter in the past. And, and so it was just this private, beautiful moment that we got to experience um, in knowing what transpired between Jesus and Peter. And in that, God, through Jesus, gave Peter a job to do. And his job that he was assigned by Jesus Christ himself was to take care of God's people. Now, Peter did that in many different ways. Um, Peter, believe it or not, is one of the most prominent figures in the beginning part of the New Testament. And we just kind of overlook him and talk about Paul. But Peter was huge. And the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life was so powerful that even when he walked by people, if his shadow touched a person, they were healed. So Peter took his job that Jesus assigned him very seriously. And we know that because we have future glimpses of what that looks like. But what we are reading right now is conspiring all at the same time. So Peter doesn't know yet that he's going to be such a good person at being able to fulfill his job of feeding and taking care of God's people. We know because we already have some of the rest of the story, but Peter doesn't. So we can't assume what Peter is thinking here, but we can make a few inferred guesses because we know Peter, because his personality we have seen. And because Peter's probably kind of 
sarcastic with how he says something. So it's it's kind of it's kind of easy to see some of the things that he he questions. But notice that when you know Jesus is asking him, "Do you love me?" Peter responds three times in a row, like, "Duh, yeah, I love you." And after the third time, Peter is kind of, uh, I don't want to say abrupt, but it says that Peter was grieved that he had to say it three times. I guess that would maybe bring some assumption that Peter didn't feel, Peter was sad that Jesus had to ask three times. Um, I'm sure he had a moment there of recognizing the three times how easy it was to say he didn't know him and love him. And now Jesus having to ask three times again. I'm sure that that the grief that Peter felt was was very big. But if we continue to look, right after this happens, another conversation takes place. And this time, Peter wants to know, what about John? Does he get a job? Now remember, John was called by Jesus, his beloved. John himself is writing this book that we're reading. And he doesn't call himself John. He reminds people of the authorship by saying, the one who Christ called beloved is writing this. So everybody and their brother knew how close John and Jesus were. It's funny because it reminds me of my own life. I do not have a lot of friends. I think that um, a lot of people call me their friend, but I am a really terrible friend. I, I'm not good at, I hate talking on the phone. Um, because of my health, I don't get to go, you know, and say, oh yeah, let's go out and do this or let's go shopping. So I'm a really lousy friend just because of the state of my life and how I am. But I have three friends that I am so unbelievably close to and they play such different roles in my life. And it's funny because, you know, you can't have three best friends but you can have three close friends that each have a very deep part of your heart making them equal best friends um my friend terry is the one that i would call my beloved and the reason being is because we've known each other since children and because there is many times that the role that we take with each other is her leaning on my shoulder and me giving her love and teaching her the word. So our relation, and then she just brings joy and funness and memories. Um, and then I have a best friend who I tell everything to spiritually. And she is this, this amazing accountability in my life. And she makes me laugh harder than anybody has ever made me laugh. And she makes me cry harder than anybody has ever made me cry. And she's so valuable. But her and Terry are not the same. And then I have another friend. And it's funny because she's a sister. Really, all three of them are sisters to me. Um, but she's like a mentor, a, a hero in my life. Because I just look up to her so much from what she's able to accomplish in life and how God has used her. So the reason I say that is because many times it talks about Jesus taking aside Peter, James, and John. Now, Jesus was surrounded by the multitudes. There are people that are listed in the Bible that talk about how much they love Jesus, like Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They were very close to Jesus. Um, there are several different followers that that were very close to Jesus. He mentioned several of the women and thanks them because they have provided meals and homes and just been so wonderful at spreading the gospel of who he is. He had 12 disciples that were very close amongst many followers, but he had three people that were just so intimately close to him and they all played a different role. 
Peter, I think Jesus just loved Peter because Peter was just Peter. <laughs> there was no pretenses about Peter. He was just Peter. He was mouthy. He was ambitious. He was impulsive. He was, he was a pretty crazy guy. He just was kind of like in your face. Um, we don't know why James was so close to Jesus. It never really tells us. Um, but we know that John was really close to Jesus in a different way than Peter. John had this tender relationship where he kind of submitted under Jesus's wing and just allowed Jesus to pour into his life. He was like a sponge. He just wanted to know everything. So as we make these determinations of the friendships in our life, we're doing this purposely because of this scripture. So we're going to pick back up at the scripture and we're now going to be looking at verses 20 through 23. And Peter is just so interested in this idea of what the beloved job is, what John's job is going to be. And we're going to see the flavor of what he thinks, and then we're going to see how Jesus responds. Okay? Here we go. Peter turning around. This was just after his conversation with Jesus and feed my sheep. Peter turning around saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who had also had leaned back on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who is going to betray you? It's very important that he qualifies him like this because, you know, everybody at the table said, who is it? It's not me. It's not me. But he distinguishes that when John asked that question, there was a different flavor to it. Okay. So asking that question, is it the one, you know, who said, the one who says, who's going to betray you? The one that was snuggled up under your arm. The one that you were pouring into. And the Lord said, excuse me, and then Peter, we're picking up at 21. Peter, therefore, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? So Peter turns behind him. He hears, you know, commotion behind him after he's had this private talk with Jesus about getting his job of loving the people and feeding the people. He turns around, he sees John and he pokes over to Jesus and says, Hey, what about that guy? What about your beloved one? What about that one that leaned on your shoulder and was asking you about being betrayed? What about the guy that's standing right behind us? What about the one that you love so much? Okay. So do you get a flavor? He is asking, he is really interested in what that beloved's job gets to be. And Jesus said to him, this is really important. I want you to hear this. If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Okay, let's stop here for just a minute. I want you to really listen and tear apart what these words are saying. Please listen to the flavor and the arrangement and the, and the definitions of, the, of these verses here, of these words, because it's so critical. Jesus said to Peter, if I want John, that guy you're looking at, that guy you're so curious about, if I want John to remain until I come back, what is that to you? Now, that had a lot of insinuation that you could draw from it. What Peter drew from that is, are you kidding me? Jesus just said that John doesn't die, that John gets to stay alive until Jesus returns. Well, Jesus very swiftly corrects Peter and let's see what he says. This saying therefore went out among the brethren that that disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. He said, if I want him to remain until I come, what business is it of yours? What does it matter to you if I choose that? What does it matter to you, Peter? And then the gossip got around. After Peter made a wrong assumption, then it got around all the rest of the followers. And Jesus just comes a hard line and said, I did not say that John wasn't going to die. You made that assumption. What I said is, what is it 
your business? What does it matter to you? What job I give John? I have given you the job to follow me. And in following me, in following me, you will continue to have your jobs grow and change. You will be at my disposal. But think about your own job. Focus on following me and not on what I choose to do in somebody else's life as a job. So this is a real harsh uh, reprimand. And what I think is so cool about it is the word here that he uses. He uses this word remain. What does it matter if I want him to remain until I come? And it's repeated twice, once as the answer and then once as the reprimand. What does it matter if I want this person to remain? What Jesus was was saying when he said the word remain is, is I'm going to give you a chance to, you know, to look up the definition in your time. But the closest that, that I can come to explain it to you is this idea of staying put um, or staying content, say, staying in that spot. My mom used to always tell me, if I would come to her and say, I just don't know what the Lord wants me to do. I just don't know what the Lord wants me to do. She would say to me, go to the last place where you heard God speak and stay there and remain faithful in that until he speaks to you again. That was the best advice any mother could give any child is if you're not hearing him give you another job, then stay put. Maintain your course until he says something different. So that's the word that Jesus is using. He is saying, if I want him to stay put, if I want him to not, let, let me read it to you firsthand, to stay put and not depart, to continue, to wait, to last. So it's this concept of lingering or remaining or being content with where you are. Now, uh, for two examples, let me give you two examples. We won't look at them yet, but let's think about the example um, Jesus used when he took his three closest friends and he took them to the garden when he was going to pray. Remember what happened is he said to them, remain here, remain and pray for me. And what happened? Jesus came back and each time they had fallen asleep. They couldn't remain. They couldn't stay in the state that they were asked to stay. If you are told, stay put, then it means stay put. I've learned this the hard way with, with all of my grandchildren. My twins, Asher and Bennett, they are so full of energy, you don't know how to help them even be able to contain all the energy they have. So they're just moving and running. And for a while there, they thought it was a game to run out the front door towards the street. And oh my goodness, as you know, as a yaya, I'm like, no, boys. But it was one of the very difficult times that me and the twins had because they thought it was funny and I knew how serious it was. So even before opening the door, I would say, now you stay put. Yaya says, stay put. And if they would even walk forward or run forward, I would be right on them. Hey, I told you to stay put. Now, the reason that was so important for them to learn from me to stay put is because they had no idea what was coming next. They had no idea whether or not a car was going to squish them. They were too little to even understand to look left and right. Too small. All they thought is, we're running away from Yaya. How fun. So I had to help them understand how important it was that when Yaya says, stay put, then you better stay put. And that's what Jesus is saying. When I ask you to remain, when I ask you to hold out, to, when I ask you to just stay put, obey me because you don't know what lies ahead. And if you try to guess or rush or compete or compare, you are going to miss. All right, let's think about another 
um, another incident in the Bible with Jesus and um, his disciples. Do you remember when he, um, when the Bible records in chapter Acts that he, that he was ascending and that they got to see him after he resurrected? We had covered a couple of those scriptures and they saw him. They literally saw him go up into heaven and they saw him in all of his glory. And it's funny because what were some of the last things that Jesus said to him? Go to Jerusalem and remain until my spirit comes. What would have happened if they wouldn't have stayed put like Jesus said? Jesus knew what was coming. He knew that by telling them, remain, go to Jerusalem and remain and don't move. Don't take on any other jobs. Don't assume anything. Stay put until the Holy Spirit comes and then you'll know it's time to move again. So this concept of remaining is ginormous. You know, I know that you see this sign, be still. This is one of my favorite phrases. It was one of the first ones we did together is be still and know God. Well, this is one of uh, my other favorites is remain in me. Just remain in me. Because I can, like Peter, get myself all in a tizzy. Well, who's doing what? And I'm doing this. And well, what else should I do? I can get myself so worked up because I like my, my twin boys. Um, I love to have lots of energy. So for me, this concept of being still and remaining are beautiful words to me. He is saying to me, I am, I am asking you to remain. And my response to him is, I am remaining. I am remaining. I am being still. I am staying put. I'm remaining exactly where you've asked me to be until the next time you tell me to move. So this scripture is just beautiful. Now I saved a little bit of extra time because I want to share something with you that I'm not sure how well it's going to come out, but I want you to see it. My, uh, four of my girls, it's so hard because I have daughter-in-laws everywhere and I have some girls that have been in my life that aren't married to my children yet. And, um, so they've been around forever that they're still my daughter-in-laws, although they have not been married yet. Mikhail and Sage have been together four years. Um, so, I mean, there's just, there's just these beautiful girls in my life, but not all of them can get together. And that's really hard. But four of my girls got together for Christmas. And I have never received a present like this. Um, they got together and they wrote me a song. And they played it and sang it um, on Christmas Day. And the title of the song that they wrote is called Remain. Now, let me just put this in perspective. In December, nobody thought I'd make it till January. And so it was a very difficult time. And I had been... I had suffered a pretty big ordeal. And so I had not been able to go shop and get any presents. I, I, I wasn't able to even leave the house from October, October 14th on. And so it was a very odd Christmas because it was just different. It was just different. And so the last present of the day was this, and I'm going to read you the words, and then I'm going to try to play the video and hold it up so that you can hear it but I want to read you the, the verses first because you're not going to be able to hear it. And I'm going to say goodbye. And when the song is over, I'll just, I'll just click the off button because um, I want it to be something that's in your heart. So I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Please listen to these words and listen to my girls sing and get this understanding of what it means to accept the identity. I am remaining. I must remain. My job is to remain. How many times will I stumble? How many times will I break? I'm down in unknown regions, 
searching for you with every breath. Just when I feel defeated, sorry, the tears are making me not be able to see it. <clears throat> How many times will I break? I'm down in unknown regions, searching for you with every breath, just when I feel defeated. One more punch, and I'll break. Look at your creation, and you reveal your face. You, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. When the mountains move, I see you. When the oceans raise, I hear you. As the battles rage on, I'll keep singing your song. So I'll praise you with my breath. I'll praise you in the pain. In you, I choose to remain. Such unbelievable wisdom and beauty. Now I am going to pull up. Searching for you in every breath Just when I feel defeated One more punch and I'll break I look around your creation And you reveal your face You, Lord, are a shield around me My glory The one who lives my Thank you for sharing that with me. Please choose, no matter what's going on right now, choose to remain. <laughs>